Next, we'll hear from Dan Peterson, regional agronomist, Northern Plains region for AgriLiquid. Dan came to AgriLiquid with extensive agricultural experience. After several years managing hog and grain farms, he moved into retail farm supply operations and sales, designing and building grain drying systems and selling seeds, fertilizer, herbicides, and feeds. Following a move to Wisconsin, Peter founded and managed what became the state's largest crop consulting firm with five professional agronomists over 14 different crops. He eventually ventured out on his own as an agronomist and environmental consultant in Northern Illinois. Today, Dan will provide us a look at AgroLiquid's research in the field and the results on yield and forage quality. Here's Dan. Thank you, Andrew. Hello, everyone. I am Dan Peterson, regional agronomist for AgroLiquid. I've been working with forages since 1980. I've long believed that we could create more value and therefore more farm income by managing the fertility of forage crops at a higher level. I love field research. And in my first year with AgroLiquid in 2015, I had my eyes open to the potential of AgroLiquid in forage crops. What follows is that story. Here's my goal today, maximizing the value of your forage crops through both yield and quality. In the first section of this presentation, I'll discuss my field and contract research results over the past five seasons. In the second section, I'll discuss the many ways that AgroLiquid can work for your forage crop and your management system, including saving spray operations, using manure and dry fertilizers in conjunction with AgroLiquid foliar applications, and tank mixing options that save time. Well, this is what started it all for me. My first test plots with the company were at Poplar Farms west of Manitowoc, Wisconsin, not far from where I live. In the background of this picture, taken during our field day in August, you can see a Darielin Seeds alfalfa variety trial. The varieties were planted east to west. Poplar Farms and their Darielin agronomist had decided to split this field north-south. On the east half, they applied 150 pounds of potash, 0060, to the stubble after the first cutting came off. Now this is a routine practice here in Wisconsin. On the west half, they waited about 10 days until the alfalfa was six inches high. They then sprayed six gallons of Shur-K, which is one of two agroliquid potassium products. This was repeated again after the second cutting came off, so now we are treating the third crop. Weight and quality samples were taken from each variety on both treatments, by Dairy and Seeds um, agronomist. Well, those results immediately grabbed my attention. The lab and yield results from the second cutting showed a slight advantage for the Shur-K over the dry potash, but it was the third cutting results that really popped out at me. Even though the potassium applied from the dry potash was 180 pounds per acre, and the actual potassium from the Shur-K was only seven pounds per acre, the results in favor of Shur-K were impressive. Significantly more dry matter, significantly lower ADF, an 8.1% higher RFQ. But what was most impressive for me was the 6.2% higher neutral detergent fiber digestibility, which is directly correlated with more milk per cow in the ration. This for me was big. But knowing how results can vary from year to year and field to field, I knew we had to prove repeatability. And yes, they were repeatable. So in 2016, the next season, I was able to arrange 11 different field trials scattered across the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, Wisconsin, and Minnesota. Several of these were in cooperation with Daryl and Seeds again. Several were with Dan Olson, who was a well-known forage specialist and researcher in Northeast Wisconsin. And on the, rest of the, uh, on the rest of the plots, the farmers themselves did the sample collection and where possible took the yield comparisons. Well, the overall results were rather astonishing. These results were averaged across all treatments, cuttings, and locations. 37.5% more dry matter yield, 5% more protein, significantly better ADF and NDF, 40.5% more milk per acre using the University of Wisconsin Milk 2006 formula, and 9.5% better NDFD, NDFD. And well no neutral detergent fiber digestibility is well proven to result in a half pound more milk per cow per day 
for every one unit increase in the NDFD rating. So now we're going to 2017 and 2018. <clears throat> More research, 32 comparisons in Michigan, Wisconsin, and Northern Illinois. So the North Central Research Station in Central Michigan is on, that's actually our own agroliquid research farm. We had some great wins once again, but more field variability and the results did come into play. One of the trends I noticed was that where we tended to lose to dry fertilizer side-by-side -side comparisons or not see much gain when we used as we were used as a foliar supplementation to dry broadcast was actually on lower fertility fields, which is actually counterintuitive. By this time, I also had more grass and alfalfa grass mixtures included in our research. And from these initial grass and grass mixture trials, it was clear that grasses responded equally well to alfalfa, showing that we had potential value on all forage crops. In Eastern Kansas, a custom operator applied a low rate agroliquid tank mix on a straight brome grass field. He wasn't able to collect yield data, but he did send in samples from the round bales to a feed lab. Well, as you can see with a column on the left there, he got incredible increases in the quality parameters. And what was really highly interesting was that during the winter, uh, his customer noticed that where he had placed an agroliquid treated bale, this is uh, for pasture feeding uh, during the winter, and about 20 feet away, a bale from the non-treated area of the field, his cattle actually ate the agroliquid treated bale down to the dirt before they even touched the non-agroliquid bale. That's, a, that's actually a true story. In Wisconsin, once again at Dan Olson's research farm, uh, his alfalfa, alfalfa and meadow fescue mixture showed impressive yield and quality gains, as you can see on the right there, from the agroliquid foliar treatments versus his standard dry fertilizer program. Here's an interesting result. Um, this new seeding field in Minnesota showed severe sulfur deficiency uh, and it was on sandy soil, as you can see in this picture. He broadcast a blend of potash and ammonium sulfate on half of this field. And on the other half, I asked him to apply a 50-50 blend of Sure-K and Access, which is one of our uh, sulfur products, at three gallons each. The agroliquid treated side of the field greened up right away. And rain a few days later uh, kicked in the AMS so that that side greened up as well. But the farmer took samples as he cut and sent them to his feed lab. And this chart shows the large advantage of the Sure-K and Access blend over the dry fertilizer application. And if you take a look at the right-hand column there highlighted in green, you can see you know, what we did. Um, again, look at, look at the RFV value, about 30% better. RFQ, 32.1% better versus the dry. That all-important NDFD at 48 hours is 9.9%. And here's something too, I just wanted to point out, the lignin uh, you can see is significantly lower. We don't always observe this, but it seems to be a fairly frequent result when we treat with agroliquid foliar products uh, on alfalfa or grass, we do seem to get a significantly uh, lower lignin uh, value. This is, on an on, this is an on farm trial conducted on a dairy farm in Northern Illinois. Um, these, uh, the Mitchells actually did this entirely themselves. I was not involved other than to make the recommendation. <laughs> um, they were not an agroliquid customer at the time. Um, but after getting these results, yes, they are now. They have a certified truck scale on their farm and they weighed every load going to the bunk silos. So they were easily, easily able to determine the yield from each side. They took samples, sent them to the feed lab that they use for ration testing and quality was dead even, but look at the yield differences over the dry alone and the dry plus agroliquid foliar treatments. <clears throat> this was on very high fertility fields. The agroliquid advantage resulted in a $252 per acre return over the agroliquid cost. But obtain obtaining on farm yield data in forage crops is difficult. Chop loads have to be weighed in the silage wagon or the truck loads segregated from measured areas of the field, or bales have to be weighed and counted from measured areas. Scissor cutting is laborious, and honestly, the sample sizes are just too small to be meaningful. So in early 2019, 
AgroLiquid invested in our own forage plot harvester along with a tractor, trailer, and an ATV mounted spray applicator. And this has greatly improved our ability to get research plots done at multiple locations and in multiple states. This picture was taken while Danny Titus was harvesting one of the Western Kansas plots last year. The machine is simply a miniature green chop mower. The chopped forage is collected in the bag, as you can see there on the right hand side of the machine. And then we take that bag off um, and weigh it on the electronic scale mounted on the other side. So now we have the wet weight, we tape measure off the harvested area, and that allows us to calculate the wet yield per acre. And then we uh, take grab samples and mix them and uh, from uh, the material from the bag, and we send those to a feed lab for analysis. It's hard work, but this way we can do several plots per day and we take good sample sizes so that we know our results are more typical or accurate for what the whole field would have done. Going to just last year, 2019, uh, Kansas and Colorado, from that previous slide, um, we had 27 comparisons across four different farm cooperators. And the results, once again, astonishing. The return on investment was big. We were about even again on the quality parameters, but the agroliquid treatments, once again, increased yields tremendously. If you look at that lower uh, bullet point there, one of the cooperators, for example, <clears throat> um, averaged on three trials, a return on investment of $189 per acre. Well, he has 4,000 acres of alfalfa. So I guess do the math on that, it's a pretty great number. Here's the results in chart form. Uh, again, what really jumped out at me was how an agroliquid only program applied at the same time as the cooperator's dry fertilizer. We actually out yielded the dry by 1.7 tons of dry matter of alfalfa per acre. That's pretty great. Okay, this year in Minnesota, uh, Tim Gabrielson had the machine. He lined up four different cooperating farms for plots. And our per treatment win rate was right at our long-term average of 82%. However, this time our margin of increase was smaller than typical, and we were a little bit behind in quality across these plots. The cooperators did notice that the strips sprayed with agroliquid treatments grew faster, reaching cut maturity about four days earlier each time. That's actually typical of what we have seen in all of our research on forages so far. And here's an example, I just wanted to show this so that you can see the quality parameters that we test for. Uh, this isn't all of them, but a um, good chunk of it. An important requirement for me is um, that regardless of what feed lab is used, it must be a member of the National Forage Testing Association. These member labs keep their lab equipment calibrated to the same test samples, which enhances quality control and makes the results from one member lab very close to the results obtained by a different member lab, uh, which makes our results from lab to lab um, a little more uh, directly comparable and accurate. This gentleman, Chris Cook, this is an interesting story. He sent me this picture in late October this fall, taken from the cab of his hay, of his hay vine. Uh, Chris farms irrigated fields located near the North Platte River on the far eastern edge of Wyoming. And he actually began experimenting with agroliquid products, um, I believe it was about 10 years ago. He grows alfalfa as a cash crop for a large dairy located south of him. And he also grows quite a lot of pinto beans, corn, and soybeans. Well, Chris has noticed that the more agroliquid he used over the years, the better his crops were over time. And so he just gradually began to use less and less dry and more and more agroliquid uh, liquid fertilizers. And eventually, he just quit using the dry fertilizer, and now he uses agroliquid exclusively. I love working with him because he's open-minded, and he's always looking for improvement. He consistently gets great results from his alfalfa. But <laughs> this one takes the cake. Um, when he sent this in for testing, it came back with a RFV of 324. So the lab, not hardly believing that, retested and it came up with an RFV of 328. And quite honestly, that's the highest RFV rating that I've ever seen in my long career working with forages. But for the whole season, he shipped 130 semi loads of big square bales, and he didn't have a single load testing below 170. So it's quite a testament in his mind to the uh, quality results that uh, come from using an agroliquid program.
So wrapping up this first section, our, our six year overall win rate for agroliquid in forage crops is 82%. That's about, that's looking at 88 different comparisons, I believe. Yeah, 88. Um, so we have quite a, quite a number of field comparisons now to go by. And, uh, and again, that win rate being 82%, um, I think in agriculture, that's, that's pretty impressive. We've learned that alfalfa has an amazing ability to absorb nutrients from agroliquid products. And including, that includes sulfur. Grasses are also efficient, although they're not quite as tolerant to high rates as what alfalfa is. Although we have not researched grass forages as extensively as we have alfalfa, so far the results do seem to show equal benefit. A consistent effect again that we had was that agroliquid treated alfalfa grows to cut maturity three to four days faster. So you'll need to adjust your cut timing accordingly. Section two. Um, in this section, I'm going to discuss how agroliquids flexibility of application timing and our high level of compatibility with crop protection chemicals can save trips across the field. I'll also discuss how to incorporate dry fertilizer into an agroliquid pro program and some management tips to optimize your results when using agroliquid. What I've learned over time is that the best application timing seems to be at about six inches of regrowth. At this height, we have good leaf interception and enough days, honestly, left until cutting that the plants can put those nutrients to work for a sufficient length of time. I have had success with later timings, but I would say generally, don't foliar feed if you're less than 10 to 12 days out before cutting. Just simply need to add enough water to your blend for a total application rate of between 10 and 15 gallons per acre, use flat fan nozzles, and use your typical spray pressure. The maximum application rates depend on the product blend, but I have had no trouble with leaf burn at alfalfa, in alfalfa at common rates of three to eight gallons per acre of product. And I have used some products and blends that can go even higher. <clears throat> this is where our application flexibility really shines. Being able to take products that we use, such as ProGerminator, ShirtK, Calibrate, Access, Escalate, um, that's, that are maybe left over from planting corn or soybeans or some other soil applications, and we can use them to great effect in foliar applications and still get that great efficiency in utilization. But grass hay, we know that liquid nitrogen fertilizers will have some leaf burn potential when applied to growing grass. For example, let's say you have a grass hay or a grass pasture with a need for nitrogen, but you have several inches of growth in the spring. Well, here we can take out the flat fans and we can put in streamer bars as shown in this picture. And this is actually a very popular practice out on the plains for applying nitrogen in wheat. You will see some minor speckling or leaf margin burn from the nitrogen, but it won't be enough to even really slow down the grass. And high energy nitrogen is usually safer than UN solutions and can be flat fanned in alfalfa grass mixtures if we keep, if we keep the rate down to about two to four gallons per acre. If you do need higher rates, uh, for example, if you've got more than 50% grass and you need more nitrogen, simply switch to streamer bars and you will not get the, the uh, burn risk that you would with flat fans. This is a really great feature of agroliquid products and it's very convenient for our customers. We're very compatible with fungicides, insecticides, and herbicides, and we honestly seldom have mixing issues. But there have been a few. So jar testing is a low hassle way to be sure your tank mix will work. If you tank mix our products with chemicals, this is important, follow the chemicals label for spray instructions and adjuvant re uh, requirements. Non-ionic surfactants are safe with agroliquid foliar applications. But if the label requires crop oil or methylated seed oil, we prefer that you spray agroliquid fertilizer separately because the crop oil concentrate or MSO will burn the leaf just by themselves and they will greatly enhance the burn potential of any fertilizer tank mixed in with them. When spraying just a blend of our products, you do not need to add surfactants. We absorb rapidly through the leaf surface without the need for a surfactant. When tank mixing, follow this mixing order will prevent most mixing problems. First in the tank, any spray grade ammonium sulfate, if the herbicide, typically this is for glyphosate, if they require it, and no, our nitrogen products, high energy nitrogen and in response are not a replacement for the AMS. AMS. Follow the label again. Next is wettable powders. 
and other dry granules. And I have found that dry that um, it helps mixing when I pre-slurry these before adding them to the tank. Be sure you're running the agitation, but not so fast that you're getting a lot of foaming. Now you add any clear, uh, non-oily, water-soluble liquid chemicals, and then the agroliquid fertilizers. Last in the tank goes any emulsifiable con concentrates, dual would be an example of that, and any other any surfactants that are required by the by the herbicide or crop protection label. If the water is cold, remember to slow down, give the agitation more time between steps. Patience pays when avoiding mixing issues. Well, we, be, we believe strongly in using soil testing to guide our plant nutrient uh, recommendations. Crop consulting taught me that the highest return on investment you can achieve is through soil testing. Because our liquid formulations are so efficient, Growers do sometimes use a full agroliquid program with no dry fertilizer. And again, Chris Cook would be an example of that, but this is farm by farm, customer by customer. Remember, we often see our best results from foliar applications on medium to high fertility fields. Forage crops remove a lot of potassium, sulfur, and calcium. So when using an agroliquid foliar program in your forage crops, we like to look at dry fertilizers as soil amendments rather than as supplying available nutrients to the crop this year. Remember that dry fertilizer top dressed on a dry soil surface um, will behave just like manure in that situation. It's going to be less available than what conventional wisdom would, would uh, normally tell you. Maintaining soil, phosphorus, potassium, sulfur, and calcium at adequate levels are important to keep your forage production high. And this is how I like to use dry fertilizers as soil amendments, meaning that's what you do to maintain your fertility and you use agroliquid to supply the immediately available nutri nutrition that your crop benefits from. So manure, it's great. It's an often frustrating fertilizer though. Um, dairy manure, liquid dairy manure is commonly applied to stubble right after a cutting comes off. And while this is a good way <clears throat> to manage manure storage, liquid manure carries a lot of salt load and high rates can and do suppress yield or injure the crop. In my many years of consulting in dairy country, I often observed that the nutrients were less available than what universities or the growers, uh, conventional wisdom again, would expect to have. And I think the most common reason for this is that the soil surface dries out in the summer sun and nutrients on a dry surface cannot be absorbed by the plant. Even after a rain event, the soil surface dries out rapidly again. And here's where agroliquid foliar treatments really shine. I have had great results in my research when we foliar feed after manure applications. And the low amount of actual phosphorus and nitrogen applied through the foliar feeding means that you won't have to alter your nutrient management plan. Grass mixtures do get more common going east from the Great Lakes into New York, Eastern Ontario, and New England. Here, the optimum blends for agroliquid foliar applications begins to shift to include more nitrogen. Remember that nutrient removals from grass from an alfalfa grass or straight grass forage are very, very similar to straight alfalfa. So dry phosphorus and potassium fertilizer management is nearly the same. With alfalfa grass mixtures, I especially love our product called Fertarine in the blend. It supplies just enough nitrogen to boost the grass without making it too competitive with the alfalfa, and it improves the palatability of the grass. On straight alfalfa, I can spray pretty high rates of access and escalate for sulfur, but grasses are more sensitive to leaf burn than alfalfa is, so my rate recommendations for access or escalate are usually less per application. With percentages of grass in the mixture of more than 50%, there won't be enough nitrogen from the alfalfa roots to support good grass production. So here I do like to add some in-response or high energy nitrogen to the blend, or go to streamer bars if more nitrogen is needed. Permanent pastures. Um, one of the issues with urea or um, 28 or 32% is that very, very quick uh, green up or uh, lush growth in the spring. Um, but as you know, that peters out pretty quickly. And by June and early July, either more nitrogen is needed or a rapid fall off in growth is just accepted. High energy nitrogen is the most stabilized nitrogen in the market today. When applying in the spring to grass pastures, it releases slowly. And if you're comparing, say, 28% to, to high energy nitrogen, 
you're going to notice on the 28%, you'll get that kind of quick flash of green uh, growth. And the high energy nitrogen is going to kind of kind of lag behind that a little bit. Um, but I like to say that that's what's flattening the curve. Um, because of that um, stabilization, uh, we, we extend our, our uh, availability to the crop out over a longer period of time. And we can also add at this time, we can add ProGerminator, Calibrate, Micro 500, uh, or other products for a complete nutrient package. Um, then after that mid typical kind of midsummer lull in grass growth, you can come in with foliar applications if you'd like, uh, with end response, Furterain, or other products uh, where needed to kind of sustain that production all the way up until fall freeze up. Well, that ends my presentation. I know that was kind of a, a bit of a fire hose of information. Um, but thank you for listening and attending our uh, virtual forage summit. Um, keep in mind that AgroLiquid provides a pretty highly trained team that you can tap into to help obtain great results on your forage crops. Thanks again.